Hello, guys. This is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, and so fun to see you again. Welcome back. We have a really awesome interview today um, for you know those of you who have kind of been on the channel. You've seen this series of just people who have decided to be done with their eating disorders or their disordered eating or just their relationship with food that's not serving them. So what we do here is we just help people to get free from any sort of like food crazies, right? Like if you have a relationship with food that is wrecking your life or making you unhappy, we teach you how to do nothing but just use your brain to get completely over it. So it's like, we don't need all the other other fluff. We're not waving a magic wand. We're not doing, you know, pills and all these, you know, it's like, no, actually it's as simple as just being able to change the relationship with your thoughts because your thoughts lead you to do all the things which are like, you know, eating too much or binge eating or, you know, getting into these cycles that just don't serve us. So, I mean, the success is amazing when you do that. And I love sharing these stories with you guys, of just real people, because I mean, you've heard enough from me, right? So like, let's hear from some other awesome people. And I'm so excited. We are talking to Margaret today. She is a graduate of my program and she has just rocked this thing and has just had some really cool experiences and an amazing journey. So, I'm so excited for you guys to meet her and Margaret. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you. So happy that you're here. You have such a beautiful story and I'm just excited for us all to get to know you a little bit. So, I mean, feel free to just be like, hey, Margaret, you can introduce yourself a little bit, but, and then let's, let's just get into, I mean, where were you kind of at before? Tell me a little bit about like your journey, like, you know, how long you've been struggling with this and sort of like your, your story leading up to the point where, you know, we had, you know, connected. Okay. So I've been struggling with officially, I would say binge eating mainly at night for, I'd say about four years in the lab, but prior to that binging, not as frequently, but certainly overeating and emotional eating. So probably emotional eating probably since I was a teenager and I'm almost 50 now. So, um, long time. Um, I think that it was, you know, just the last two years really that the binging became a regular thing like every night. And um, so I, about a maybe nine months ago, I just, and it, it takes its toll as anybody that has this struggle knows, it takes its toll on your physical health and your mental health. At least I felt that it was. And I kept trying to do it on my own. I kept waking up and saying, okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to make a plan and I'm going to be stronger and I'm going to set these goals and I'm going to reach my goals and it's going to be fantastic. And then maybe I would make it through one day. Um, but it was such a habit that I, I just couldn't break no matter how hard I tried. So, uh, one night feeling, you know, just so horrible physically and mentally, I looked for a therapist that was specialized in binging and disorder. So I went and I made an appointment and, um, she was lovely and we, you know, had really nice talks, but the binging didn't budge at all. It stayed just as tenacious and consistent and stressful. And it just, I made no progress after about five months. So I, somehow I stumbled upon you. I don't know how the internet is funny that way. And I read the brain over binge book and I knew that I needed this. It just resonated with me. And I knew that this was the answer for me. And I knew watching your videos, Lydia, that you were, that you were just what I needed. So I, um, so I took some time to think about the commitment and kind of what I needed to do on my end. And I went ahead and scheduled I can't remember what, I think it was a talk anyway. Um, and then I started the program and I knew that it was going to work. So I didn't know how, but I knew it was going to work. So, um, that's, that's where, how I found you. 
That's beautiful. And I'm so glad that you did. Yes, you scheduled, um, you just scheduled like a free first session. And it was so fun that you got to connect with, you know, us and the team. And like, it's, it's beautiful. Like you said, it's funny how the internet works that way. You know, it's like some, you know, yeah. some of these women in my, my program and like amazing women like you were like, I'm not even sure how I found you, you know, it's like, but I find that like with, with a binge eating disorder, it's like, there's a lot of research. There's a lot of Googling. There's a lot of videos, you know, cause you're just so desperate to like find an answer. Like you're like, Oh, I just want to be done with this. So totally. it sounds like you had totally. tried, you know, therapy, you had tried making the goals and like, was this sort of like yeah. an, an anomaly for you? Like, did you find that in other areas of your life, you were able to like make goals and stick to them and make progress. And that this was yeah. just like a weird, yeah. like, why isn't it working for food? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm successful. I mean, I'm highly successful every, I feel like pretty successful. Um, so yeah, it was just, you know, it, just, it was just took over everything. It took, like this problem of mine took over everything. And it also, like I would eat foods that my body could, re really couldn't digest. Probably I was intolerant to. And so I have, I've struggled with acne and sore joints and things like that knowing that you know eating corn makes me really jittery and stuff like that but i would eat it any corn chips you know i would eat it anyway until the to a point where i was like so full that i could i couldn't do anything but lay on the couch and i couldn't be present for my i wasn't present for my children and um there was so much wasted time i spent eating and it was always at night like around four and then i would just graze until around eight i was so full that i could just it just was like so painful and, um, and it happened, you know, every, every night. And then the next day I wouldn't eat on, you know, the morning was fine and then the afternoon was fine. And then the evening it would start all over again. And, um, because I would eat so much food, I would, it would disrupt my sleep, digest, trying to digest all that food. Like even laying in bed was painful. And I have always practiced yoga since I've been practicing it for about 10 years and I was, I was a gymnast growing up. So I've always been pretty fit and pretty into exercise and the binging and the, just the sheer amount of food that my stomach, I was forcing my body to tolerate made it impossible for me to have a regular yoga practice. So I was, I had no way of de-stressing. Actually the binging just made everything so much more stressful. And, um, it just was really depressing that I knew there was this part of my life that could have been so much better and I was sabotaging it and I couldn't stop. So it was, and by the time I called you, by the time I made the appointment with you, I just was, I had so much anxiety. I was so overwhelmed. It just affected, it just was devastating the way that I felt. And I didn't really, I didn't realize actually how many women experience this. So, but I felt like I was the only one. I felt like I was crazy, you know, because it's crazy when you think about it. Yeah. And especially just like you said, like you're highly successful. Like I see this as a really common theme as well. You know, just like highly successful women who just like, you have everything else in place. And then with that as your personality and with that as sort of your history, it totally makes you feel crazy, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Like, because it's so different from everything else in your life. And you're like, what is going on? And it's so confusing. So there's like the actual thing that's happening, right? But then there's all like the confusion and the guilt and the anxiety on top of it, which impacts your life too, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, I know. That is just, that's really tough. And I was just, you know, I just real quick did the math, you know, if like every day, you know, like the, the binging and the grazing from like, you know, four to eight, that's four hours a day, right? So like in a year, that's like... 1,460 hours, even if we're just thinking of 12 hour days, that's four months out of the year spent binging. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. just the amount of time I know can, like you said, you knew that there was so much more than you would like to be doing than that with that yeah. time. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So did you find yourself like that, like you said, you know, that it had been getting worse, like, you know, to the point where it was every day, like, what did you kind of see happening if you weren't able to fix this? Like, what were you worried about, Margaret? Um, well, just that it would, um, I guess 
when I would wake up and I would say, this has to stop now, it's gotten way too out of hand. It, it has to stop right now. And it was like a train that I couldn't stop. So um, I guess I was, I was afraid that, well, also that it would get to the point where I couldn't turn back, you know? Oh, of course, I was concerned about gaining weight, of course. Um, concerned about my health, concerned about the foods that I was eating that I know my body can't really tolerate and how that would affect me. My mother died of breast cancer when she was 52 and I'm 46. So this concern that, you know, that this is a genetic thing that I need to, you know, be aware of. And if I have all this stress because of binge eating or not managing stress in my life, that's really what is a big contributor to cancer and to sickness and disease is stress. So that was a concern. And then also just the example I was setting for my children, you know, especially my daughter who would see me, she would see me and she would see the amount of like sugary foods I was eating. And she would, a couple of times she wouldn't say, she would say, Oh my God, mom, you ate all of that. And I would just say, yeah, I did. <laughs> which is not a good example. And one, one time, this was like maybe two years ago on Halloween, they trick or treated and brought home a bunch of candy. And, um, I didn't eat any candy that night. So I really powered through and didn't have any candy. But then like the next day, I think when they went to bed, I ate most of their candy and they woke up the next day and found their candy missing. And they knew who ate it. They knew it was me because they've seen me. And so they were literally crying because I ate their Halloween candy and um, it was, it's just not, you know, that's just one example of how it affected the relationship with my children who are the most important, you know, clearly the most important relationships besides my husband. So, yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like with just these people that you love and care about the very most, like it felt sort of this out of control, like this is you know, hurting my relationship with my children. Like this is literally, they're waking up and they're crying because yeah. you know, I yeah. eat all their stuff, but it's like, yeah. and that, like you said, that train that you felt like you, you couldn't stop. So yeah. yeah, that is, that is, I know so, so rough. Um, and then also just like with the health stuff, right. It's like, it's so interesting, like in our, um, in our, our group, we have an amazing group of women in the program, you know, and you know, one thing that we were just all talking about the other day, um, as you know, we all interact with each other is even if, I mean, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's wonderful. It's amazing to be done with binge eating. Like that's awesome. Right. And that's what we're there for. But even with that aside, just being able to not have the anxiety and the stress about it anymore, just the health benefits from not constantly having stress hormones going through your body, that alone is like huge. So I, I was, I remember thinking there is something wrong with me. You know, I am not there. I am broken or I am you know, I have mental pro like mental problems or something like there, I, I really felt like there was something seriously wrong with me and that I was different from everyone else because I kept sab sabotaging myself like that. So okay. it's very well, it's stressful. Like, I should know better and what's wrong and what's broken. And it's like, and not even knowing what, right. You're like, well, I know something's severely wrong, but you know, what is it, right? <laughs> like if I knew, maybe I could fix it. But it's, yeah, that feeling of just being alone, and I—that's a long time to feel alone and to wonder that. And you know, you're losing sleep, and you're not doing the yoga that you love. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, I know it's a really hard place to be in. Yeah. So, anything else, sort of like about you know, before we connected, Margaret, that you wanted to share, just sort of like the feelings that you had, or how this was impacting your life. Hmm. I think that did I cop? I mean, I'm basically just feeling worthless kind of and feeling like, you know, low self-esteem, low self-confidence. Um, and then also feeling like my life really couldn't start until I got stopped binging. And I kept saying that to myself for years and years and years. So if you keep saying something like that to yourself over and over again for years and years and years, it piles up to just be like this heavy weight that just weighs you down. I mean, that's how I felt. It was just this heavy weight that weighed me down. And um, 
So it was so, it was so far reaching. It wasn't just me eating too much. It just affected every part of my being. Yeah. Like profoundly. Like your entire life was on hold and how you could fix this and you had no idea how to fix it and no idea if it'd ever be fixed. Yeah. And these are the prime years of my life. You know, I'm old enough now to be wise, you know, I'm not young and, you know, there are certain, there is certain freedom in being wiser with age. And then my children being, you know, 13 and 11. So it's like such a great age, you know, that, and my children aren't going to be, they're going to grow up and they're going to move out. And so these are the years that really matter. I feel like these are the years that really matter. And I, I felt like I just wasn't living. I just wasn't living. I was just squeaking by, barely making through, barely making it through. And then also not going out, you know, if I felt like, oh, I look, I feel so bloated or I just feel so crabby because I didn't get a good night's sleep and just not healthy. And then I, I wouldn't necessarily seek out social, uh, social activity. Or if there was, if it wasn't like really important, then I wouldn't go. So spending a lot of time at home in my, in our house and not really getting out. Um, because I felt like, oh, I'm going to, maybe I'll eat too much or they're going to think that I look bad or something. Reasons that are totally ridiculous. But to me at the time were really important enough to make, important enough to affect the way I behaved and the choices that I made. So. Yeah. So it seems like just more of the missing out on life, like not living yeah. life. Like you're not totally. going out and being with people and you're missing these prime years and yeah. your kids are getting older and it's just like, like that sort of wasteful feeling of like, okay, life is happening and I can't jump in yet. Like I can't participate. I can't be here because there's this huge thing that has to be solved. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I am so excited to celebrate you, Margaret. I mean, Uh I know how rough it was before and I am just, it's so, so fun to see your, your transformation and what's happened for you. So let's just, let's just start out. What, what do you remember, Margaret, is like one of the very first wins for you? Like one of the very first, like, years of hope or like, oh, I think this is working. Hello, dog. <laughs> so yeah, my, my, sorry, my, someone's at the door. So my dog is barking. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's see. One of the first wins, I guess it started within days. Um, within days of being on the program, I'm going to walk to the front door while I talk to you. Yeah, it's totally cool. Um, <laughs> so sorry. Um, so one of the, so within the, sorry, within the first like two days, I, started following the program and um jumping in like with both feet like really um enthusiastic was that you know and immediately I had a different feeling about feeling feeling overwhelmed it's like the feeling of being overwhelmed kind of wasn't it started to go away and um I guess I just had a lot of hope so my first win would have been after you know, months of binging five days a week, I went three days without binging. And that happened within three days. So like, like within three days, three days went by that I did not binge. And I knew, I knew it was going to work. You know, I just knew it. And, and, and the, the, the progress that I made was, um, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. But it was always in the progression of progress. It was it was always moving forward. Yeah. So that's beautiful. So fun. So just like that hope within just like the first few days. That yeah. is so so beautiful. Um, what like what you you saying? You know, two steps forward, one step back. You know, like what were some things that maybe you you struggled with, or that you were skeptical about, or that you wondered about, and sort of like you know getting getting past those. Like, how are you stronger on the other side? Um. Because I guess knowing just, it's like a new way of thinking. It's like, it was like a new way of thinking for me. So um, I started to chip away at all of these thought patterns that I didn't realize I even had and just having an awareness about them and um, 
kind of putting in new thought patterns. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah totally. That That's beautiful. And, you know, just like doing the work. And so um, let's, you want to talk about the muffin story? Oh yeah, the muffin story. Okay, so that story, that was the biggest win ever. That came, I'd say, like a couple of weeks in where I, it was one of those, this was a step back kind of thing. And I bought, I was feeling really great and I bought some muffins for my daughter, little mini ones. They, and I had them on the shelf. And for days, which prior to this program, nothing lasted in our house for more than a day. If it was a cookie or a muffin, it didn't last for more than a day. I would eat it all. It was a compulsion. But anyways, I had the muffins on the shelf for a couple of days. And every day my daughter would have one for breakfast. They were really small. And one night, I don't know if it was because I was bored or because I was stressed. I'm not sure. But the muffins kept calling to me like they used to, you know. And um, it was this overwhelming urge to just kept pulling me toward the muffins. It was like they were singing like, I'm on the show. <laughs> and I could, and I could just barely, and it was really intense. And I just kept practicing the, um, you know, the direction that you gave me and just kind of practicing what we, what we were learning and, and what I was learning. And I actually did not wind up having a muffin, although I really, really wanted it. And, um, then the next day, and I felt so powerful, I felt so incredibly powerful and strong. And then, then it was like the muffins were still there, but they never called to me again until eventually they were eaten up by other people, not me. So I, it was like I made it through. And I knew at that, after I made it through that, I knew I could make it through anything because I actually had the experience of being really uncomfortable and not succumbing to it. And I, I mean, you can talk about that kind of experience, but to actually have it was really transformative for me. So now I know what it feels like. I know what it takes to make it through. And, um, and I know that it works. Yeah. So. That is so beautiful. I love that. Right. Cause it's not about like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, we waved a magic wand and then we're just going to maintain this like magic and hope that the compulsion never comes back. You know, like this is really about you doing what you want to do and knowing predictably how to do that. So it's not like, oh, let's, let's hope the magic lasts. It's like, oh, okay, like this is how I feel. This is what's coming up. And you knew exactly what to do to get through that. And it wasn't like you couldn't have the muffin. Like you could have had the muffin. That's totally fine. It's not about not having muffins. It's about doing what you want. And it sounds like for you, Margaret, you didn't want to have a muffin. Like, and so you had that experience of really doing what you wanted to yeah. and that it didn't last forever in this compulsion you did what you needed to. And then, like you said, they didn't sing to you anymore. It was just no. like, oh, okay. And then you moved on with your life. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That is so, so cool. Yeah. And the, the way that my, the way that I would binge is I would just want to try something. Like I would, I would think to myself, oh, just have one muffin. So that's how it always started. So I knew that if I had that one muffin, even though it was like a two bite size muffin, I knew that if I did it, that, that, that it's like, then it's all, then it starts. And so, yeah. And also it was like in the, like my cravings always started in the afternoon because that's just when I got home from work and then I would eat. So, um, it was always really hard for me at that time of day. And so it was like the hardest possible time of day. And it was just the way that it normally would go down where I would just think to myself, Oh, just have one, just have one. Cause that's just, it's not a big deal. I and mean, you can have one, but it always led to the whole box for me. So. Yeah. So that's yeah. really neat. So just having that piece around food is in like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, I could have it. I could not have it. I'm choosing not to have it, even though it's calling to me. And then just like doing what you want. And even if you would have had the muffin, right? Like, did you feel empowered to, even if you started down that track, right? Maybe you had the muffin and had something else. Did you feel like you knew what to do, that you learned what to do to be able to stop at any time? Yeah, totally. Because at that point I had already, I felt mastered which I didn't, couldn't believe I actually did, was able to do that. But I, by that point in the program, I was able to stop my binge midway or after, you know, 10% in, I was able to put it, put the brakes on it, which I could never do before. I could, that was the hardest thing. And people would talk about, well, I decided instead of to eat the whole bag, I would just have one. And I would think, oh, I could never just have one. And so that's, that was something that kind of, 
like I, I think I might've binged a full blown binge once after the program started. And then after that, they were, they were mini, mini, mini until basically completely gone. So that's huge. Yeah. That's so, so cool. Beautiful. And tell us a little bit, like, how is your life? Well, let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how your relationship with food is different. And then let's talk about how that's made your life different. Cause right. I know that like, Oh, you've had so much happen for you. So yeah. how's your relationship with food different now? Um, you know, there are, I, okay. So basically I try to listen to my body and if I'm hungry, then I, then I eat. Um, but before I eat, I ask, I take a moment, you know, to really try to ascertain whether I'm, I'm hungry or just emotionally hungry. So, um, so now I might say, well, that's just emotional and then I won't eat. Um, and then, and I'm fine. Or, you know, I'll realize, no, this is legitimate hunger. My body needs food. And, um, if I do have something that I, I don't have the strict attitude anymore, like, oh, you can't have this where I say to myself, no, you can't have any of this. But if it's something that I know causes like inflammation in my body, like for me, corn and tortilla chips do, I feel shaky then, and my kids are eating chips and guac, then I'll just have like one and done. So it's more relaxed. It's not all or nothing. It's more intuitive. I've gotten to a place where I really, and it feels good to be hungry before I sit down to eat, which is not that I was never hungry before, you know, I was, because I was always grazing all day long or binging or whatever. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, and I feel really strong and really sane about the eating. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I just want to, to clarify for those of you listening that it's not like, oh, okay, well now we're just going to, you know, learn how to do intuitive eating or whatever. Like, it's like the fact that Margaret is able to like eat how she wants and listen to her body, like that comes once you get this huge binging thing out of the way. Yeah. Like, it's so neat to be able to refine how you feel around food or, you know, how you want to eat or just like how you want to live because you don't have the big binge thing anymore. Like you can't even look at that stuff. If you're binging every single night, like intuitive eating or having what you want or thinking like, oh, like I don't feel good eating this sort of food. Like that stuff doesn't even come into the picture when it's four hours every night of just like incessant compulsive binging. Yep. Like, oh, that is so, so beautiful that, I mean, that you can, you know, like be able to develop those things. So that is awesome. Yeah. And yeah. how do you feel about binging now? Like you as it, like, do you feel like a binge eater still? Like, do you like, yeah. you just feel done? It's a distant memory. It is a distant memory. Um, it's funny because like after I stopped the binging, then I would still overeat, uh, you know, more than I wanted to. And um, then I would kind of obsess about that. Like, oh, why did I eat, you know, that extra piece of bread? I wasn't hungry, you know, why don't, why do I eat when I'm not hungry? And then you pointed out, it's like, well, prior to this, you were binging to the point of, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing really well. And so it's just kind of like baby steps toward progress. Like I said, two steps forward, one step back. And um, yeah, so, um, yeah. 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 Beautiful. I love it. So I just, I, I just sense like peace and like yeah. not a big deal miss. And like, yeah, you're just like moving on, not a binge eater anymore. Like we're just, okay, we're good. So, I mean, getting, I mean, I know that one thing that you said was that this was really holding back your life. Like, you know, you know, the binge eating was like, okay, man, like I really cannot participate in my life. I can't be present with the people that I love. I can't do the things that I want because I have this huge thing in the way. So, you know, in our short time together, as you've just gotten the, the binge eating out of your life, how has this changed the other parts of your life? Like that sort of life you wanted to jump into, what's changed for you? Um, well, I guess I'd have to say the fact that I'm doing this video and uh, like I have, I'm like most people, I imagine have, you know, insecurities, right? Where they are really hard on themselves. And for me, one of them is like my face, you know, and the way I look and most, I'm not photogenic. So even just being video, being on a video and it being on the internet, I mean, I know nobody I know is going to see it. And if they did, that's okay. But the fact that I'm comfortable enough that I've calmed those crazy voices in my head enough to, um, to, to allow this to happen. And then, and 
And the first time I realized it was when I went out with some friends that I went to high school with and we took a picture and posted it on Facebook. And normally if it's a picture of my, me, I hide it from my timeline and I allowed it on my timeline. So the fact that I allowed an up close picture of my face on, on my timeline just shows how much I've let go of the crazy thoughts, you know, and also that just feeling better about myself and also not really worrying so much about, I guess, what other people think, or just, I don't know, just seeing the beauty, the beauty that whereas before it was like, oh, Margaret, you're, you know, just the things that I would just the horrible criticisms that I, the self criticisms that would go on in my head are, and, and, and they're like practically, they don't affect me anymore. Every now and then they pop up and I, and I, you know, oh, there's that voice, but I don't allow it to control me. I don't allow it to control my behavior. Yeah. That's so, huge. that is so, so that's huge. Yeah. yeah that's huge. That. So it's like, you yeah. know, the, the crazy thoughts that were leading you to the binge eating. I love how you've taken those principles and like, you know, tamed all the crazy thoughts about other stuff too. Right. It's right. like just having so much more peace and confidence. Yeah. And now this is just something that happened that I had an unintended benefit. I didn't realize until after, you know, and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, wow, this is new for me. But also um, just like other areas, feeling very inspired to move forward, like in my career and feeling inspired to move forward and to take the next steps to, um, you know, transform it into something that I never thought possible. Right. Um like taking the skills that I have and parlaying it into something kind of different that would require uh, confidence and for me to put myself out there and for me to take risks. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's something that de- an unintended benefit also. Cause when I started the program, it was to stop binge. It was to stop the crazy binging. I didn't realize how, the mentality spilled over into every single area of my life. So, yeah, that is so beautiful. I'm so excited for you. It's really fun to just see just how you just blossomed, right? It's like, wow, what can't you do with, you know, this, this confidence and this freedom and, you know, being done with this habit. And like you said, just moving forward and doing what you want. Like, do you feel Margaret, like you are participating in your life now? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I feel like the, like the possibilities are endless. I just feel like the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, so excited for you. Anything else that you just love, even just like little things, right? Like a lot of times women talk about like, oh, I just find food in my house that I forgot was in my house. You know, like stuff that would never last. Yeah. What are sort of like the little fun things that you just like surprise you now? Well, I used to go to the grocery store and, you know, I would go by the chocolate section and then like load up with the chocolate or whatever, and then eat, eat it in the car on the way home. And now it just doesn't even occur to me to eat in the car. Like it just, before I would like devour, you know, like a lot of food in the car on the way home, the five minute drive home from the grocery store, maybe so the kids wouldn't catch me or something. I don't know. But now it just doesn't even occur to me. And yeah, we have food. There were ice cream. My husband bought ice cream sandwiches and they were in the freezer. And it was like, they might as well have been shoes in the freezer because it meant nothing to me, which eight weeks ago or nine weeks ago would have been a big stomach ache for me. (laughs) So, yeah. Wow. That is so fun. Just like that different feeling around food. And like you said, it doesn't even occur to you, right? So this isn't about like, Hey, you know, let's take the next year to analyze why you eat in the car. It has nothing to do with food. It's something to do with, it's just like, no, like, let's just get the, like you said, the crazy binging out of your life. Yeah. And then all these sorts of things like, Oh, why would I eat in the car? Right. Right. Your, your brain is just in a different place where food just isn't a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, that is totally. so. That's beautiful. Anything else that you're just celebrating and excited about on this side of of life? I I guess um, I feel like I'm setting an example for women by just. I mean, they might not notice. Like other people might not notice it, but I feel in within myself that I'm just like radiating something positive for the world. I I feel like 
you know, also through yoga, I decided to take a yoga teacher training course that starts in the fall. And I, and prior to this, I had the thoughts like, well, if I take the yoga training, I'll spend all this money and I probably won't get a job because there are so many yoga teachers and what are the chances? And if I did get a job, then probably no one would come because there are all these other yoga teachers and, you know, I don't look beautiful enough for people to want to come to my yoga class and silly things like that. And now I feel like I, destiny is calling me to, and I started teaching yoga to friends for, you know, without charging them to kind of help to empower them. I've been practicing for so many years and I know it so well. And I've been doing it like the last about two months I've been doing it. And um, I want to take this yoga training and I feel like I have to do it because once I am, once I'm in a position where I can reach more women and empower more women to be strong and maybe share my story or um, just basically be an example for, of what a strong woman is. Cause that's how I feel. I feel very strong and I feel like that's what women need, especially in today's world. We need example of strong women so we can lift each other up. Yeah. I love just that. like, just like how you lifted me up and this program lifted me up. So it's such a beautiful thing what you are doing, Margaret. And thank you so much for sharing that. And like, you're absolutely right. Just like lots of examples of strong women. And it is incredible to me with all the women, you know, that we talk to, it is incredible to me how many strong, amazing women are out there that are hiding because of their eating disorder. Yeah. It's like, yeah. The quality of women that just are going out into the world, you know, being freed from these food create, like seriously, like the graduates in my program, I'm just like, yeah, like go out and like do yeah. your thing in the world because seriously, like, you know, you're going to go out, you're going to empower women. You're, you're already doing that, you know, with your, with your yoga and like all these possibilities and what you want to do, you know. I see women start their art again and start writing and start volunteering and start new careers and finally progress in their careers and start new relationships. It's like, okay, now we can live life. Now we can like do this because we're not spending, you know, four months a year binging. Like it's just huge. Huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And I think that's such a beautiful desire, Margaret, that like you want to take that power and to help others. Like that's a beautiful thing. So thank you for being you. Yeah. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks. So what else? I mean, like maybe our, like, do you feel like our conversation is complete for today or do you feel like, you know what, like, no, like this is something else that needs to be said or another part of your story or something that you would want to say to those listening. I guess what I would want to say is, um, you know, if you, I think that this might be common that women, because we're successful in other areas, think that we can do it on our own. And if you keep trying and you're not able to do it on your own, like me, then you just, you, you, you know, you definitely need to reach out like, and have a support so that you can move forward and be done with it and just be done with it and move forward. If I had known about you, five years ago, you know, my life would be very different, but, um, you know, I waited so long to finally reach out for help because I thought I could do it on my own. Cause I did everything else very easily on my own other things like career wise and, you know, uh, other things like that. So anyway, that's my advice is to just go for it. That's Get help. Beautiful. I love that. Yes. And just say, you know, Hey, like, do you want this done? Yes. Okay. Well, what needs to happen? If what needs to happen is not something that you're doing on your own, then like you said, you know, getting the help that you need. And that's exactly, that's exactly what we do. So thank you. Thank you for being on. It's wonderful to celebrate you. You have an amazing story. I'm so happy that I've just gotten to know you. Like that's a beautiful thing is I get to know all these amazing, powerful women and then see you just be skyrocketed in your, your power and the way that you help others because now you're free. So thank you for being an example of that, Margaret, and being willing to share your story. And I'm so, so, so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lydia. Thank you for everything. And you guys, I'm so happy that you're tuning in today. And thank you, Margaret, for being on this show. And, you know, if you guys are thinking like, okay, you know what? Like, I, I want to be done with this. Like, I, you know, my, the way that I am eating, the way that my relationship with food is right now is just like not serving me. 
and you just want to be done with it, then um, go to www.lydiawenty.com slash apply. And what that is, is that wait for the calendar to load and we open up as much time as possible. There's a huge demand. You can get on the waiting list if there isn't any openings right now or if there aren't. Um, but go ahead and if you find a spot, snag a spot. This is a free, this is exactly what uh, Margaret did actually. She just snagged a free 45 minute session with us um, to help you get to get that first step to recovery and to just get that solid, and then we can move forward from there. And if you qualify for the program, then we can talk about that. If not, that's fine, and you have that first step, but either way. And if you, you know, just tune in here, you know, we've got, uh, you know, new videos every Monday, and we've got the free ebook at LydiaLifestyle.com, and we have our amazing Facebook support group um, that is also free. There are so many wonderful resources, but I mean, dive in with the resources, yes, but, if you're just resourcing yourself for hours a week and you're like, okay, I really want this to change, then I want to invite you to just do it, like change it, do what you need to do. That's what we're here for. And I love Margaret that you've given us a beautiful example of that today. So this is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, and this is Margaret and we are signing off and mwah. bye guys. You have so many options. You can watch more videos. You can subscribe for new videos every Monday. You can even join our Facebook group with an amazing support community.